Hey Valley, Andrew here. This week at the table I'm with Lance and we're talking about how can we trust the church when we've been burned by a church before. All right, Lance, I'm excited. This week we actually have people who have written in and they have some questions. That's okay? good. Good. Yeah, yeah, people are actually watching. Thank you. <laughs> so this comes from a connection card. Uh, this person asked, how do you trust the family, they're referring to the church, when you have been burned? For them, they said that it's incredibly scary. Yeah, yeah, and and that's a great that's a great question. And anytime we begin to talk about this community stuff and talking about the church and the church being the church, that's always the biggest fear because yeah. I think early on, maybe when you first give your life to Christ, you you read about the community, read about the church, and there are some assumptions. At least for me, when I was young. There were assumptions. I, I looked at the church and said, oh, wow, this is an incredible community of people where I can be safe, I can share things. And then somewhere along the way, I begin to share something and I find an ugly side of the mm-hmm. church, which is just, it's the ugly side of humanity. So I begin to protect myself and pull back. And I think everybody has that feeling of, I've been involved in the church and I've been hurt by the church and you're asking me now to show up to participate as a family, to even begin to reveal a little bit of my mask, reveal a little bit of myself. And I don't know that I can do that because I don't know that I trust everyone here. Well, my answer to that is that you don't have to trust everyone here. I've never, I've never said that you got to walk in the door and stand up in front of 150, 250, whatever the group is and say, hey, guys, I want to talk about my sin today. What you need to do is to find those two or three And there are two or three that are within the community. Maybe it's within your home group, your life group. You've got this life group and you're a part of that life group and there's two or three that you feel pretty good about. And in that, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, I think, in that you begin to reveal a little bit. You begin to show a little bit of yourself. And then before you know it, it's a process. Just don't jump right into it and say, here I am and expose all yourself because that scares people and it it doesn't do you any good either. So what you want to do is just reveal a little bit. Just begin to get a little vulnerable. And then they will start to get a little vulnerable. You'll you'll create this community of trust. And in that community of trust, then you'll begin to say, okay, I can we can go through this. Now, does that mean they won't hurt you? That doesn't mean that. They're human, they're broken, they're going to do something. They may reveal a secret that you didn't want them to reveal. You may reveal a secret that you that they didn't want you to reveal. Uh, you may say something that hurts them, or they may say something to you that hurts hurts you. But that's a part of community. And it's worth going through some of those pains in order to have this genuine community that God wants us to have. So my, my, my answer is pretty easy. I'm not asking you to trust all of the church. I'm asking you to trust, trust two or three. And then as we all begin to do this, and we have little communities of, of genuineness, right? You have these communities of genuineness in the larger community. Now, all of a sudden, that's going to affect the entire community. Right. It, 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 it can't help but to spill out. It can't help but to get to a place you know, where you're talking about what you talked about over here. And then you start to share a little bit more. It, it, it can become amazing. But it's got to start someplace. Right. Actually, you're, you're right. We did actually talk about this a few weeks ago in one of these, in one of these interviews. And one of the things I appreciated that you pointed out is like not everybody within our church is on the same maturity level. And like you said, you gotta find a few within it. Because you can't you can't walk into a church and assume that everybody is walking with the Lord at the right. full capacity of whatever Christian maturity level there is, I guess, to be at full capacity. And so like you just said, you have to take the time to just kind of investigate the lives of other people and see if they bear the fruit that's trustworthy. Right. And okay. in there asking questions <clears throat> about something that maybe you feel really passionate about but you just you ask the question kind of in a side way so that you can kind of hear what they get what they say about something so that you begin to know i i I know somebody i know somebody that that attends the church and i know they're searching they they are exploring the claims of christ Mm -hmm. and because they're searching and because they're exploring and because they're reading a vast a, a, a vast group of people of authors They have a lot of ideas. So then they show up and they have been in some life groups where they have shown up and they have brought out those ideas, trying to float those ideas, trying to see, okay, where does this stand? And they've been attacked. 
Now, what I have found is that oftentimes those people that attack, they're real insecure in their faith, and they feel like anything outside of this box, I can't, I can't talk about it. I, I have to defend my box because I'm, my box is so shaky anyway. It's all I got. And I have found that whenever you run into those kind of people, the best thing to do is to say, okay, you're not somebody that, <laughs> that I'm, I'm going to explore this with because you're incapable of exploring it. Okay. Just because they pushed you back or they got angry or they attacked you, that doesn't that, – that shouldn't shy you away from the community. That just means they're broken. Yeah. And they're incapable of exploring this, this larger group. Listen, God is a big God. He doesn't need me to defend him. He doesn't. We can ask questions. This is a good thing to do. Ask the questions. Bring that stuff out. But you got to find the right community to do that in. That's good. So, <clears throat> would you say it's okay to take the time to build trust with people? Like you shouldn't rush into any um, yeah. level of, I guess, of, of what's the word I'm looking for? I guess disclosure. Like it's okay. Like if you've been burned by a community in the past, it's okay to just take your time to just get to know people. I think it's it's more than okay. I think it's imperative. Okay. All right. There you go. <laughs> I think <clears throat> I think that if you're running into something, <clears throat> we we know people. We, we've known people who jump into relationships quickly, mm -hmm. and the relationship goes really fast, really far. Yeah. And it doesn't work the way that they that, that it's just not good. And most people would say. Relationships need to take the time to build. You need to build stuff and, and to put it, it's layer after layer after layer after layer. And if we really want to do community, and I think, I think we're just so stinking hungry for this, right? Yeah. And because we're hungry, we jump. And we say, oh my goodness, I, you're the one I want to, you know, I, I got to tell you everything. And I, I don't think that's healthy. I don't think that's the right thing to do. I think hmm. that you have to take the time. I think you have to take the time because honestly, you need to work through some of this stuff. And then you need to take the time with them because honestly, they need to begin to say, okay, they're sharing stuff with me, but can I trust them? It's a two-way street, right? If it's not, and I'm just showing up and, and spilling all over you all the time and asking you to help me with my stuff, that's not, that's not a relationship. Right. right. That's not a relationship at all. This was a great question. Uh, I just wanted to thank the person who, who took the time to write this on the connection card, which brings up a thing. If you guys are watching this and you have questions, it's okay to, to write in on a connection card or if our editor wants to use After Effects, my email should be right here, maybe, if we do that later, maybe. If not, we'll put it in the description, but you can write in or you can comment on the Facebook status or whatever, but we would love to take the time to just go through whatever questions you guys have and if you haven't had a chance to hear this week's sermon go ahead and click on this microphone and we'll take you right there it was it was amazing you did a great job this week thanks there we go. all right thank you hey thanks for watching our video if you have any comments or questions please let us know there should be a comment box here on facebook or if you're on youtube it has the same thing